What's up, Internet Land? Zachem's Prime, aka Zachem's Prime, here with another uh, video review, and today we're taking a look at uh, something that doesn't transform, actually. Well, I mean, technically it does, but the action figure doesn't, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. This is the Breheit Muga from an anime called Back Arrow. And it's uh, kind of a weird anime. Um, so it's about a dude. It's an isekai, right? So this dude, you know, pops into this world with uh, complete amnesia. No memory of who he is or was or even what his name was. Everyone thinks he's some kind of an idiot. And uh, the word for idiot sounds kind of like back arrow. So he's thinking that they're just calling him by his name. When in fact they're just being, you know, the pleasant town people that they that they all are. And, uh, it's, it's a Western, it's a, it's a sci-fi Western with giant robots because you got the people, right? <laughs> and if they slap on certain people can like slap on some sort of a bracelet on their arm and turn into a giant freaking robot and fight other people that turn into giant freaking robots. And yeah, it's just like Kung Fu the fuck out of each other. So <laughs> that's... That's what the anime is. And, uh, so this is, uh, this is the, uh, protagonist's, uh, uh, mecha character that he turns into. And, um, this is a Robot Damashi figure. Robot Damashi was a line that, I'll be honest with you, when, when they first announced it, I felt a little bit betrayed. I was a huge fan of the previous action figure line that they had. And, and I was like, ah, they're killing my favorite line to make this, like, like other one, and then I got a few robot Damashi figures, and I quickly became a uh, a fan. But yeah, robot Damashi figures are pretty good figures all in all, and I actually generally really like them. This one was dirt cheap from Big Bad Toy Store, I believe, and so it was kind of a I don't know spur of the moment purchase, I guess. But anyhow. So yeah, there he is from the front, from the back. Lots of white plastic. Lots of clear blue plastic. And then all the black, most of the black actually, is just paint accents. There is a little bit of black plastic in here, but it's mostly like in here, in these joint here, and in his joint there. And just, you know, in a few joint places. Most of the black on him is plastic, or sorry, is uh, paint accents. Though it does look like the black up in this torso is actually like plastic parts too. I don't know, or maybe their paint apps are just that damn good. Because Bondi's paint apps are pretty damn good. <laughs> they, uh, they generally, uh, they generally go pretty hard on their paint apps, and it's Pretty nice, but anyhow, let's talk about the sculpt. Um, zoom in on the head real quick. Get that centered. He's got a little spot of yellow up on his forehead. A little bit of highlight around the eyes. Like the eyes, of course, it's all black up there. But this little yellow under highlight kind of accentuates the like location of them. Gives the impression of stuff. You can see in the reflection, there's actually... Not really any sculpt in the rest of the f uh, of that face. It's just the little highlight there. Got a really long head. Good little little blue accents up on the ears here. All looks pretty good. There, the shoulders have got this kind of like rounded thing. I actually would have expected them to be a bit pointier, but they did not do that. A bunch of these little, like, diamond-looking insets. You got them here, 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 here on the forearm. You got one of those, like, man boob here. I'm not sure what those are supposed to be. But, like, maybe, like, verniers or something like that. Here's one in his leg. I don't know what the story is with that. Just a cool design, I guess. He's got this weird, like, flappy thing here. It attaches in with a C-clip. So, um, and I think I already just knocked it off once during uh, this review. Ooh. 
once during this review so far. So, I mean, this is something that can fall off pretty easily, but it just attaches back on. The use of plastic type in here, it's like they use ABS and they use POM and they use every now and again, they use a little bit of PVC. Whereas like the previous line of figures, the uh, mobile suit and action figures, they were almost entirely PVC. And while I did really, really, really enjoy them, maybe one of these days I'll have to review some old mobile suit and action figures that I have. Leave me a comment if you really do want to see that because I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, while I really enjoyed those figures, it, the, the PVC was not the highlight of them, though, I mean, it did make them super durable. Good little stuff in here, this little flappy flap here, helps for the posability when his leg moves out. Some of these panels want to fall off pretty easily, like, I mean, it's not all glued together. A lot of it is just tabbed in. Gosh, this this one here falls off a couple times. But then it just goes right back in. Interesting structure in the ankle. You got postability. Oh, I mean, I, I am going to do postability segment on this. But um, yeah, the, there's a ball joint up front. And then there's a hinge joint back here. And then there's a hinge joint here. And so the back of his foot doesn't have the a, 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 a typical, like, you know, it doesn't have a typical pivot. But then again, neither does the front of his foot. But you can kind of fake it with the front of his foot. A little translucent dick plate there. More of those little uh, weird looking designs on his ass if I were to complain about anything about this figure it's that um all in all it's actually he's got some posability um issues not really major ones but just because the ankles don't tilt per se it's difficult to find a real flat stance for him. And like if you do, it makes his pose pretty solid. But if you don't, then he tends to to wobble a bit. So, I don't know. Sculpt is really good. I suppose while I was talking about the sculpt, I should have gone over the possibility. But yeah, it's neither here nor there. Um, his head is on a ball joint. So it will look up and look down. Now it's on a ball joint that's in a weird, weird place. I'm not sure exactly where in this system it is. If you look at the way his head articulates, I feel like the ball joint is somewhere deep in the neck. But like, you can look through. I wonder if this blue plastic piece is actually coming undone. Let me... See if I can coax this piece out a little bit. Because I see a gap right in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that piece had, had come out a little bit. That improves his neck articulation a bit. So his head will look down that much, up that much. There is another hinge in the base of his neck. And, um, and this little C-clip is connected to that hinge. And it's, it's a weird one because it's, it's not much of a hinge. And it also doesn't feel like, actually, I can probably, I can take off the back of his head. Get a better look at what's in there. Yeah, there's that hinge deep in there. And then there's a hinge here. So that's not a ball joint at all. I'll be damned. That's a double hinge that's on the swivel. So yeah, his head is on a swivel, and on a double hinge, and on a hinge on that hinge. This is for an accessory, I'll get into that in a little bit. That's a bunch of swanky joints all up in there. His arm is on, um, there's a ball joint here that this is connected to. And then the ball joint 
the, this shoulder part is on the ball joint that's that's branched off of that. And then his arm is on a separate ball joint. So there's a ball joint that keeps all of his arm on, and then a ball joint on here, and then a ball joint on here, and then this ball joint is actually on a swivel as well. His, I've got his arm like this because I kind of like the pose, but it's actually meant to go like so. Because if you keep his arm like this, then you can only bend it like that far. Whereas if you put it in the proper position, you can bend his arm all the way, which is better. But he's got a hinge here and then a ball joint here. So, and that ball joint allows for a deeper bend. Um, but honestly, most of the work is being done in this first joint going into this cut here on the arm. So that ball joint just allows for, you get a little bit of, of like sidereal like flex here. Just kind of, my impression from the show is that these are meant to be like very um, human-like because the people, they're not piloting it like they are the robot. So, you know, you'd want the posability to be very fluid and very natural. And I think that that's probably why they're including just little joints like that, you know, just to get some additional like little flex on it. His fist is on a ball joint here, which you can just pop off to swivel that fist. I'll, I'll talk about that when I get into his accessories. I'll do that next. He's got a ball joint at the upper torso, and there's a ball joint at the lower torso. So that combines for that much forwards, which is not much, that much back, which is quite a bit. And then he'll do some teapot pose like so. And of course, you know, a bunch of twists. And the twist is pretty cool because, you know, as it goes around, there's various amounts of uh, of tension out of the out of the this dual um, ball joint system. So like the top one will move and the bottom one will move, and you get some like really good looking twist out of it. The hips are one of the things that I'm actually kind of like not super happy with. So first of all. The hips are connected with a hinge. They can go up that far and then they can drop down that far, which is not a whole lot, but it's a bit, you know, when it's dropped down. So he's got no side skirting, no, no, no like armors, skirt armors here. So those don't get in the way. So he can bring his arm straight forward that much. But if you put some angle into it, of course, he can bring it all the way up. And in fact, <laughs> windmill his leg all the way around if you, you know, get his arm out of the way, which you can, I guess, just by doing something like that. Woo! So, <laughs> that hinge is going to connect into a ball joint here. That ball joint is connected to um, a hinge here. So, this little blue panel here allows it so that his leg will go out that much. Which isn't amazing, but it's not bad. It's really not bad. But, yeah, so hinge joint there. He's got a double-jointed knee. And, again, I mean, it could have been better, though. It was the designer that shot them on this one because the, like, calf of the robot really collides with the thigh to prevent that from going any further. They could have sculpted in a deeper cut here, but it wouldn't have mattered because that would have still collided in there. So I like that they didn't sculpt in a deeper cut because they didn't need it. They couldn't use it. So, And then at the foot, he's got that ball joint that I mentioned, plus he's got that hinge joint and this hinge joint on the heel. So all in all, a pretty decent amount of, of articulation. He can do lots of cool like kung fu, kung fu, kung fu, kung fu fighting poses and, you know, karate chops and punching things and kicking things and doing stuff like that. And let's talk about his accessories because this is now the perfect time while we're talking about his action poses because his, his accessories pretty much all have to do with action poses. Um, you can, as I showed earlier, take off this little piece of armor here and then replace it with this one here that has big old like ribbons on it. 
and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure exactly what the point of the ribbons are. Um, it wasn't really in any part of the, uh, the thing that I researched, but, you know, he's got ribbons on his head. It's like a cape. Like, it's really, really long. But they're attached to his head, so when you have them on, it will seriously affect how much possibility you get out of the head. It'll affect how well they stay because there's all this weight hanging off of them. These ribbons themselves are fairly poseable. They're on little ball joints so they can go up and they can go down. He can, he can sit here and have like a big old, you know, like feudal Japan style headdress going on. But yeah, I, 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 I don't quite get what that's for. So, and, um, you know, you see it in the promotional material. Sometimes he's got the head ribbons on, and sometimes he just doesn't. And I'm sure there's a reason for it. I'm also sure that I don't know what it is. Come on. Also, this is definitely made out of a softer plastic. I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's got some flex to it. Maybe this might be some of that palm stuff. Polyoxylmethylene. There's like a tab that keeps this in place, and it actually does a really good job. There we go. Pull that out, replace it with the original. Keep that out of the way while we do the rest of our posability or accessory stuff. In terms of hands, get this guy to stand for a bit. He comes with the fist that he's had so far. He comes with two um he comes with two of these uh kung fu hands but you'll see that one of them is slightly thumb open the other one's slightly thumb closed but this is you know basically a matched set of hands he also comes with two widespread open hands and of course swapping it out is super easy you just you know pop that off pop that on and that, as they say, is that. Um, he also comes with this accessory here, which is kind of like a energy punch thing. It's a very pointy piece of clear plastic with a ball joint sculpted into the bottom. You can take that ball joint and you can attach it onto his fist. So now he can be doing some kind of like, you know, fist punch thingamajig. Like he's doing some sort of like a like a big old energy attack. But, I mean, there's no actual fist in there. You just kind of pretend. And he does the same thing with a kick, too. Let me put this back on real quick. Because he's got a bigger one. Which, by the way, the bigger one you can also put on his fist. So he can do like a big energy attack with his fists as well. Or you can see that there's two like little pegs on here. Now these pegs are different sizes. You've got a bigger one and a smaller one. And on the bottom of his foot, he's got a bigger hole and a smaller hole. And you just have to attach it in so that they fit on those holes. And now this is attached to his leg. And then his last accessory is this little crotch doohickey, which will attach into there. And it kind of grips on like nobody's business. Right up on his, his, his taint. And then that will allow you to put his fist back on. That will allow you to have him in some sort of like a like a rider kick pose. They can have him on a stand doing doing Kiki, kick pow, flying kick pow stuff. 
And that's pretty much all that there there is with it. Um, robot Damashi figures are typically, um, you know, fairly basic figures. You you know you, you don't have like a whole just crap load of accessories with them, which is you know not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it allows you to uh, keep your shit focused. I guess I don't know. There are some Damashi figures out there that have like a lot of accessories, but a lot of them just have just your simple amount of just the basics, just the bare essentials, what you need to make the figure, you know, display and look cool. But anyhow, that's the Brihite Muga from Back Arrow. And that's about all I have to say about it. Everybody, if you made it this far, you are amazing. Um, everybody... Stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya. Bye.